Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. He that cover transgression seek love, but he that repeated matter separate very friends. Let's start right there. He said, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeated the matter separateth very friends. Yeah, I will. It's good. Pages, I don't want pages to fall out. Anybody got an idea what I mean? When it says, um, he that covers transgression, covers a transgression, seeketh love, but he that repeats the matter separates very friends. Any idea? So I go sit down. No, no clue? Okay. 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 Hey, but it's, hey that young nigga got a took on. I can hear that. So you might well cut it off. It said, but he that repeated the matter separated friends. So what he said, the example with the my shot covering the woman's transcript. Let's look at these words first. Let's look at these words. First word we're gonna look at is transgression. All right. The word transgression is pasha. Pasha. It's three characters. Any idea? The first one should be obvious. And what's the last one? It's for shop. The last one? Oh no. I am yeah, I am. All right, we got the pay, the shine, and the ayin. And that word pasha means to revolt, rebellion, sin, or transgression. Let's leave that up there. He says, he that covered the transgression seek of love, but he that repeated the matter separated very friends. The next word we're going to put up there is love. Everybody know the word for love, right? What is it? Right. That's three letters. First letter. Olive. Next letter. Hey. So, let's stop there before we go over these words. Let's jump to First Peter. Yeah. Let's go to First Peter chapter four, verse three. For in the times past, our life may suffice us to rob the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine. Revilings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, mm -hmm. wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Mm -hmm. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to Elohim and the Ruach. Keep going. Where are you going? I found the Okay. Uh -oh. 
Play at verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch under prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. All right. So we're looking at charity cover a multitude of sins. We just read in Proverbs that he that covers trans he that covers trans transgression seeketh love. So what is charity? <coughs> charity is love. By definition, is love. In the Greek, it's agape, which you know it just means love. So in the Hebrew, we're looking at charity as love so we already see that charity is what covers the sins or love is what covers the sins and by us seeking love we are seeking to cover our sins so when we think of cover like johnny said we should automatically think about what we think about our sins being covered <coughs> nobody when you think about your sins being covered what you think of think about Mercy, but something specific when you talk about covering something, what you doing with it? What you say? Hiding them, burying them, right? Because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at through his death and through his burial, our sins have to be covered and have to be buried. So we have to understand that through that action of us covering our sins or getting our sins covered, we must die. We must bury them lust. That's why we let's, let's go back up to the top. Then, uh, verse 6. No, we're in First Peter. At verse 3, I'm sorry. Chapter 4. Chapter four. <clears throat> it says, For in the time past our life we may suffice us when we walk the will of the Gentiles, when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, access of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. So we see us seeking that and seeking him and seeking his love is what's going to allow us to cover those things, cover those lusts, and cover those things that we used to live in. So, Proverbs is telling us that somebody who is really seeking this man love and seeking to cover their sins, but somebody who repeated the matter, separate very friends, because that's what it says. So when we're looking at it, it's looking at you repeating the matter or you not fully dying or you not fully burying your sins. If your sins are really covered and buried, you wouldn't be repeating the matter, right? That means whatever it is that you repeating or whatever sin or transgression that is that you're going back to, you haven't really buried it. You haven't really died to that. All right. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. And we're going to go back to Proverbs. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Verse 8. Now we be dead with Mashiach. Go to, six. go to 6. Go to two verses up. Knowing this that our old man is crucified with him. Mm -hmm. th that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm -hmm. For that he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Mashiach, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Mashiach being raised from the dead die no more. Death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died under sin once. But in that he lived, he lived under Allah. So boom, stop right there. So now we're seeing that knowing that our old man is crucified and that body of sin is destroyed. That's what the... You dying to your sins and you bearing those sins just like he died and was buried so that you can come again in new life, newness of life. When he died, he came back new and the body of sin was destroyed. Yes, we know we literally are still in our flesh. That's why we must kill that old man. We must crucify that old man like he crucified himself. So in that, once we've crucified and buried those sins, it should be no room for them sins to come back. And us to repeat those sins because if that's the case we haven't really bared our sins and that means we're just covering up our lust on the outside we're trying to appear as if we've covered up and we've stopped and we have killed our old self but in the inward parts we still have those lusts that we have literally just buried you just hid them from others so that they can't see that you still have these problems you still have these lusts because once you really have died to them, you, they should be no more. So there should be no room for you to repeat them. All right. So anybody know an example from the text of somebody bearing their lust? And carnally. David. Well, I'm not looking for David. 
Anybody? Let's go to Joshua chapter 7. Let's go to Joshua chapter 7 and verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. All right. It said, Yahuwah said unto you, who should get thee up? Therefore, liest thou thus upon thy face. Yahshua have sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I have commanded them. For they have taken of the cursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Yahshua could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the curse from among you. All right, so let's look at that word accursed. All right. The word for accursed is. Put it right here. It's Chirah or Chirah. So, what characters we got for that? There's three characters. Sharon. Check. Check. Let's start with check. All right. Check. Rosh. Yeah. And the last one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And that word is what? What word was that? A curse. All right. So with those three characters, what do y'all think we can get out of that? Let's, let's go back. It says, Israel, Yashorah, have sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. They have even taken the accursed thing and have also stolen and disassembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. So when it says stolen, we know that's just stolen and dissembled. Anybody know what that means? Dissembled. Mm -mm. Dissembled just means deal falsely, lie, deceive. So that means you stole it and you lied and you have put it even among your own stuff. And the word there is a curse. So what are we getting from a curse? One more time. Divide the thoughts from the water. I don't think we're going to use mem for that one because what's the word? Accursed. So what's another what's another word we got on there for mem? Chaos. Right. Because we're really going to look at your thoughts have separated you to be destroyed. Because that's what it's talking about. It's talking about you have taken the cursed thing. You have lied about it. Put it in your own stuff. Now you're going to be destroyed. Right. Because the word for cursed, the, the definitions is doomed abstractly for extermination marked for extermination utterly destroyed so we know we're going to go with chaos you know what I'm saying because your thoughts your lust is going to separate you from I mean it's going to separate you from destruction it's going to separate you and put you or mark you set you aside to be destroyed no different from when you say I'm going to come and I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats the goats are separated to be destroyed and the sheep are separated from newness of life. That's why we're not going to use water for that milk, right? So now we look at that. He's saying that since you have done this, you have been accursed or marked for destruction. And then he go even further to say at 12, since they, they could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed, neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. All right. So now we're looking at it. From this angle so the same way that we're looking at us being marked for destruction if we saying that our thoughts is what's separating us to be destroyed the accursed thing that you got to destroy is what if we're going to use that what you got to destroy your thoughts because if your thoughts is what separates you it's your lust your lust what you desire in your heart we already read that in first peter the things we we saying we used to do the things the lasciviousness the lust 
the idolatries, the things that we used to do, we say we've already buried that and we still have these lusts, we still gonna be separated. It's no it's no different from the children of Yashara coming out having a covenant right here in Joshua, and they saying that we're gonna do this and we're gonna be your people, and we still transgressing this covenant through our lust, through us doing what we wanna do. But let's get to the point of the story. Let's jump down to verse 16. We still in Joshua or Yahushua chapter 7 verse 16. So Yahushua rose up early in the morning and brought Yasharal by the tribes and the tribe of Yehuda was taken. He brought the family of Yehuda and took the family of the Zarhites and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man and Zabedee was taken and he brought his household man by man and Achon the son of Karma, the son of Zabedee, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Yehuda was taken. Yahushua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, esteem to Yahuwah, Elohim of Yasharal, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done, and hide it not from me. Achan mm -hmm. answered Yahushua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against Yahuwah, Elohim of Yasharal, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold, fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Yahushua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in the tent, and the silver under it. And they took, took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Yahushua, unto all the children of Yasharal, and laid them out before Yahuwah. Start right there. So boom, now we see an example of this man, his lust or his desires were to, he coveted it, right? He coveted what? The, the garments and the gold and the earthly treasures. So he's covering the things of this earth, right? And then he's taking these things amongst the people because amongst the people, they already have one consensus and they know what's right and what's wrong. It's no different than us now because we have the word. We know what we're supposed to be doing. We know what manner of lifestyle we should be living, right? So for him, Achan, amongst the people, he took these things that he covered and desired in his heart took him in his tent and buried him. He didn't bury him to die. He buried him to hide him from amongst the people. You get what I'm saying? To hide his lust privately so nobody would know this is what he's lusting after. You get what I'm saying? That's why we have to look at it now because at the end of the day, the where, where we are, everybody in here, where we are in this walk, we all know what we ought to be doing. We all have heard enough word to where we understand fully what we supposed to be doing, right? And we know fully what's right and what's wrong. So you understand your thoughts is what's going to have you still accursed and what's still going to separate you from this man and mark you for destruction. Because we know it's not just about him coming back and destroying the heathen. He's going to destroy us first. He's coming to judge us first. And he's going to pull us out just like you should pull out the people. One by one, it, it said one by one, family by family, he brought everybody out to see what was going on. It's the same way when he come back. He going to judge every man according to his works. He going to pull us out and he going to judge us. And are you going to be marked as a curse? Are you going to have really died and he going to really mark you and show that you have covered up your sins? Or is it stuff that you still out here repeating? Stuff that you going back to that you know you ought not be doing? Because the second part of that was, he say, him that covereth up his transgression, he seeketh love. But him that repeated the matter, it said what? Y'all remember what it said? Divided. It said he separate what? Very friends. That's what it's saying. Because you going back to that is what's going to separate you from friends, separate you from Elohim. All right. Matter of fact, let's go back and, and look at that. We still got a hob up there, and we still got um, Peshaw up there. Let's put one more word up there. Let's go back to Proverbs. Let's get the second part. Proverbs 17 and 9. That's what we're coming out of. It says, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeated the matter separated very friends. All right. So let's go to the word friends. Anybody know what the word friends is in Hebrew? In this context of the sentence, it's one, it's, it's a letter. It's a letter in our olive bed. If you can use any letter right there, what letter would you use? From olive to top, what letter would you use to put that? Would you say what? Olive. Now, why would you use olive? I'm saying, why would you use olive? 
What's the read? Read the meanings out for everybody. No, no, no. Let's look at the letter. Matter of fact, let me pull it up. Don't don't use what they used in in the um, in the text. Let's just use what we know from our study. How we use our use our alphabet. What what does olive mean? We go to when we. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the letter. Because we know olive could mean many things. In other words, other times in the text, olive might be not be used for friends. But the letter olive itself means the head, ox head, leader, strength. Headship, father, talk. So when we go back and look at the sentence that way, he's saying that you repeat, and he that repeated the matter separated himself from the head, separated himself from the leader, separated himself from the father, separated himself from strength, separated himself from power. Because you can use any of them words right there, because that's why that letter is there. It's just one letter that's there, that's the olive, which is spelled, how we spell olive? How we spell it out? It's three letters. You got the olive for the ox head. You got what? The Lamar. Yeah, okay. It's hard to write like this. The ox head. You got the Lamar and you got the what? The mouth. The mouth. Okay. Alright, so this is this is how you spell olive, the word. So that's the word that we got there. So he's saying that you repeating the matter is separating you from the father, right? So it's not even about real friends. It's about you being separated from your power and your strength. So when we go back and we just look at Joshua. He just said, because y'all have touched the cursed thing, y'all have turned y'all back towards y'all enemies, and y'all enemies going to defeat you. That's no different than you having lust and having things that you got buried down in your heart, lust that you haven't really killed. How are you going to be able to stand? Where's your power going to come from? How are you going to be able to de be defeat your enemies? And we're looking at enemies. We already know who our enemies are, what our enemy is. What's the enemy? The adversary. Sin. How are you going to stand from temptation? Where's your power going to come from when you put in a situation where you tempted? Right? You're not going to have that power because deep down you haven't, you're still a curse to him. He's not going to give you over to the strength that you need. You're not going to be able to get the spirit to be able to fight in the day of temptation because you still haven't died. You still haven't buried those things and been born again. You haven't been died and brought back. You hide these things. These are lusts that you are literally covering in your heart that you don't want to let go, but you know you ought to, but to appear in front of everybody else who knows, who knows you coming off a certain way. And this is what we can't do because that's what we were doing. So in front of our enemies, we were being defeated. So areas of our life, we're being defeated because we are not able to overcome because we have given our power over because we have submitted to our lust and we have hit them instead of putting them away, destroying them. We haven't destroyed the flesh. We haven't destroyed the body of sin because we're still trying to seek after it. All right, and that's what we gotta. That's individually what everybody has to be held accountable for. That's why individually you are gonna have to go before Yahushua. You are gonna have to answer for that. Just like Achan had to go before Yahushua when he pulled him out and and asked him what is it. You are gonna have to be held accountable for that. So we gotta look at it. That's the way it is. All right. So let's touch on. I don't lost this top. Let's touch on love real quick. So what y'all think we're getting out of love? We talked about this before. Love is the olive, the hay, and the bet. So what y'all get out of that? Anybody? We done went over this several times. Nobody? Just take in the context of what we just talked about. We talked about you not having strength because you have 
accursed things? Do you have things in your heart that you have not killed? We looking at the olive in the fr or the friend that you separated yourself from is the strength or the father. So we looking at love. Love is just to reveal the strength of the house. That's it. Because how you gonna get into the house? You can't get into the house without the father, without the head, without the strength, without the power, without the spirit. That's all that's talking about. You gotta have the spirit to get into the house. What's the first fruit of the spirit? Love. That's what it is. That's what I'm saying. We got to understand this. We talk about this over and over. But it's two things you got to have. Love and faith. That's what it is. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you don't have faith, you're not going to be able to have a perfect heart. That's what. That's the recipe that we've been looking at every time we come in here. Just like he's talking about us reigning and getting into his kingdom. You got to have the faith and the love. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's do Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. This is what he required from us. And now, Yasharah, what doth Yahuwah the Elohim require of thee? But to fear Yahuwah the Elohim, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahuwah the Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. To keep the commandments of Yahuwah and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, Shamahim and Shamahim and Shamahim is Yahuwah the Elohim, their rats also, with all that therein is. Only you who had delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. So that right there. It said right there, it said, you who had delight in thy fathers to what? To love them. You understand? He loved our forefathers. This is why he made a covenant with our forefathers. This is why he, should, he extended his love towards us. That's why he extended his mercy towards us. Why does it say that he loved Abraham? Why does it say that Abraham was his friend? He said, Abraham believed me, he accounted him for righteousness. That's how he became a friend of Elohim. So when we say that we, we love him and we want to be his friend, how can we go back and repeat and do stuff we know that's not right and do it and think we're not going to be separated from his friendship? We're not going to be separated from his spirit. We're not going to be separated from his power. Because that's what we're talking about. So he requires us to have that love for him so that he can cover our sins. So we already read to Peter, what covers your sins? Love. Because he don't have to do that. He don't have to cover your sins. That's what mercy come in at. We don't have to be forgiven. But he's saying that he does, he's doing that because he loves us. You get what I'm saying? But if you don't have that same love for him, how can he reciprocate that? If you haven't died like his son died, he said he loved his son. If you're not willing to do the same thing he did for his son, like, you're not willing to do the same thing his son did that he loved, what makes you think he's going to forgive you? What makes you think he's going to give you the spirit or give you that power? That's what we got to consider in our hearts and our minds. Because that's what he requires of us. To fear him and love him with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. And he said that out of his own mouth when his son came. Let's go to, let's go to Mark. Let's see that. Let's go to Mark chapter 12. Let's go to verse 28. And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked them, which is the first commandment of all? Yahushua answered him, the first of all commandments is here, O Yahshua, Yahuwah. Our Elohim is a card, Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. That is the first commandment. Mm -hmm. The second is like, namely, this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Boom, so let's start right there. He telling us that out of his own mouth that that's the greatest commandment, that we love him. And through our love, that's how you're going to get your sins covered. But how can you say you love this man, but you still got stuff buried under your tent? You still got stuff buried in your house right now. That you don't want nobody to know about. That you don't want nobody to find out about. That you covered in it. You don't want to let it go. You want to keep it for yourself. This is what we're looking at. And let's take this back and look at it on a carnal level. Even, even Let's even take the Proverbs back. And say that we're saying that you that repeated the matter covered. 
um, he that repeated the matter separated friends. It's no different than earthly friends, your neighbor, people around you. We've all seen it firsthand how people don't want to let stuff go and it's going to naturally separate yourself from them. If somebody doing something that you don't do no more and you see that they keep doing it, naturally it should separate you from that person. You can take it in a relationship. Somebody keeps saying that, oh, I'm done. That's my past. I'm not going to do this to you no more. I'm not going to lie to you no more. I'm not going to cheat on you no more. And they keep repeating it. It should naturally separate you from that person. Because you can't believe what they say because they really don't mean it. Because they really don't love you. That's what you're looking at. That's what we got to understand. It's the same relationship we saying we have with Allahim. He's saying you love him with all your heart. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. You want suffer sin upon your neighbor. If somebody doing something that you know that's wrong and you don't reprove them about it and they keep repeating the matter, you got to separate yourself. That's book. It's the same thing he's going to do with us. Because once he know that we had an understanding, we said we believe, that's the severity of what we're doing. And it, it's coincide, right, what we talked about with going in the Passover. The same thing with you drinking that cup. And you got stuff in your tent that you ain't really died, you ain't really buried. He know that. That's what you're going to have to take up with him. That's why you got to consider that. That's the whole thing of purging the leaven from your house. Purging the sin from your house. From your body. From your mind. From your thoughts. All that tying together to what we, what we, we go out to accomplish when we keep these feast days. That's why we do this every year. So you don't have nothing that's still in your house that you know you ought to get out. But you're covered in it. You're keeping it for yourself. Because you're going to have to answer that individually. Can't nobody come in your house and, and get that out for you but yourself. That's why we got to look at that. Because over time, if it's not out, eventually it's going to separate you. We talk about this all the time. People can only pump fake for so long before they're going to naturally separate themselves because they worry about what they got covered and what they got hid because they don't want it to come up because it's not dead. Exactly, that's what we say. A little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. So that little bit that you haven't let go over time, for one, you're going to slowly get weak and weak and weak because he's not going to give you the strength to help fight sin, fight your enemies. You're going to eventually be overtaken by that to your destruction. And that's why we got to hold each other accountable and we got to hold ourselves accountable. Because we say we family and we say we friends and this is the life that we say we ought to live and we this is how we're trying to raise our kids. This is the type of lifestyle and the type of messages that we have to show. And we can't be hypocrites. All right. Let's go back to um let's go back to Proverbs and look at um sin. We're gonna look at sin and then we're gonna look at we're going to look at sin, and we're going to look at, hold on. All right. Transgression, that's what we're looking at. We had Proverbs looking at the word transgression. We didn't break this down. Pasha. That is he that covered the transgression. What do y'all think that means? Transgression or Pasha. We got the Pa, we got the Shine, and we got the Aleph. We got the Pa, the Shine, and the Aleph. And the word is rebellion, sin, transgression. So we got the pot now. What pot mean? What y'all think? What y'all got for pot? What y'all gonna use for pot? Is that, is that, is that, is that. Is that. Is that. Nobody? We got the mouth, the opening. To speak, to command, to present, the beginning of, the edge, to praise, to blow. That's for part. Then we got I in, an I to watch, to know, the word, converging in the soul and experience. And then we got Sean. 
You should know what shine means. So out of push up, the power to shine in the eye. What, what y'all getting out of that? Boy, iniquity. That, that's pretty safe. Yeah. Um, Let's get the eye in the pot. The eye in the, the pot. I ain't, yeah. The eye in the pot. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I, I can go with that. I'm just put it together. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to see what y'all what y'all gonna say. You gotta understand what the word is. It's saying rebellion and sin. What causes rebellion and sin? I know, but what does that stem from? Where where does that start? Where does that develop? From the heart. From the heart, right? So we look at that. We're gonna go with the Ayin. We're gonna go with the Ayin for the eyes. You know what I'm saying? The lust of the eye and the pride of life is what is the root of transgression and sin. You know what I'm saying? You covered it, you lusted it after what's of the earth, what you can see with your eye. Because faith, you can't see it. That's why they're totally contrary. That's why they're totally opposite. So, well, I say entrance, man. Right? Um, so, you know, it's like. No, I was going to use. This is what I was going to use. We're going to use the eye is what presents you to destruction. That's what transgression is. You know what I'm saying? Your lust, your wants, your what you want, what you desire, what you see is what opens you up and presents you to your destruction. They just open the door and you walk through it to, for you to be consumed. And they go right back into what we were looking at for you being a curse because that's what's accursing you. You walking through that door and you you um your eyes presenting you with that which what you want is what's gonna destroy you because if you don't have the spirit, if you don't have the power to overcome your flesh, you gonna always take what's presented to you. You gonna always go with what you see. Because that's what we see these people doing. When they I see it and they like it and they behold it, they it present themselves. That's the opportunity and they take it because it's nothing restraining them. It's nothing stopping them. That's why so many people are gonna be destroyed. That's why I say broad is the way. Because so many people are seeking after what they see and they're seeking after what they desire that people are going to be consumed and people are going to be destroyed and they're going to be accursed. And he's going to give them over into them lust. All right? Let's look at that. Let's go to... What I got? Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 and let's go verse 5. And when his disciples would come together, come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Mm -hmm. Then Yahushua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned within among themselves, saying, "Is because we have taken no bread." Which, when Yahushua Yahu perceived, he said unto them, "O ye of little faith, remember the why reason among yourselves, because you have brought no bread. Do you not understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, how many baskets ye took up. Neither the seven loaves 
of the 4,000 how many baskets you took up. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them my bad. not to beware of the leaven of the bread of the my bad, and the Pharisees of the Sadducees. I want 24. Let's John 24. Then said Yahusha unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Mm -hmm. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So start right now. So now we're looking at is what you hide and what you covering it worth you going to hell for? Because what is it to profit and get what you desire, get what you always want and get to do what you want to do and at the end of the day, you still go to hell. If we saying that that is our objective and that's our goal and that's what we want to do and that's what we're doing this for. Because if you already know that whatever you holding on to is more important than that, it ain't no point of coming in here and even doing this. Because we doing this because we believe and we have faith and that is our hope that we will be saved if we have this faith and if we have this love for Allahim. But what is the point of you covering these things and hiding these things up? And you get it and you got what you want and now you're going to hell. Now if you don't care about that, we know it's a lot of people who already feel like that. That they don't really care. They get what they want now and it is what it is, they'll deal with that when they come. The majority of people feel like that because they really don't believe it's a day of Yahuwah. They don't really believe that it's a day of destruction. They don't really believe that it's a kingdom. And in his father's house is many mansions prepared for those who have forsaken everything. Like it say, whoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. You willing to, you willing to give up everything you ever wanted, all your dreams, everything to serve this man. To be a slave to this man. Everybody not willing to do that. And to go back to what we talked to last night. The average person who got it is not willing to give up everything. If they know they had a handwritten ticket from Elohim saying, this is your ticket into the kingdom, take it. Just give me everything you got. They're not going to take it. Because what they see right now is what they hold on to. What they can put their hands on, what their bank accounts say, what they can go touch and feel is what they hold on to because nobody has seen the kingdom to even say that's something that they want. So at the end of the day, why you want it? If you never seen it, you never lay you never lay hold to it, you never set your eyes on it. So why can you how can you honestly say this is what you want? Ask yourself why you want it. If this is something that you know you've never seen and never touched, you've never felt. None of us have ever felt salvation. It's your hope that's strong that you know that your faith is established and this is what you want. And you know everything he said he got for you, he got it for you. Plus 10 times more that you can ever believe. That's what we comfort ourselves in. That's what you're supposed to comfort yourself in. Because you got to be willing to sacrifice that like he did. Y'all got to understand that. We're at 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the esteem of, of his Abba with his Malachim, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Truly I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. All right, let's go to Revelation 22. Let's jump to 11, 22 and 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is kadash, let him be kadash still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his word shall be. Mm -hmm. I'm the olive and the tolerant, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Root are they that do his commandments, so they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love and make a lie. Mm -hmm. I, Yahushua, have sent my Malachim to testify unto you these things in the synagogues. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the Ruach and the bride said, Come and let him that hears say, Come and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life free. Let's start right now. 
So this is what we're looking at. This is what we came to to understand that. You having this love for him and you having this faith and believing that this is what you want. You want to hear him say these words to you so that you can come in this man's house and take <coughs> and take the water of life freely. This is what we're looking for. Because it's your choice. It's your opportunity. Nobody forcing you to do it. You have to have already have your mind made up that this is the choice and this is the decision that you want to make. And if you already made it that far, it shouldn't be nothing stopping you from getting this man's spirit. Because like we talked about a couple weeks ago, the reason that we don't have the spirit, those who don't have the spirit, is because it's stuff that we haven't done personally. The only reason we don't have it is because of our own self. Because it's a free gift that he's given freely, but you have to meet the requirements. You got to do what you got to do and what you know you got to do. If you know that you not, your faith not 100%, we ask, you know, who are, what, what level you feel like your faith at? Or how hard you how hard you feel like you've been going? If you know you ain't been going your hardest, why you ain't been going your hardest? Because the choice is all up to us. If it's things you know you need to stop doing and things that you know you, know you need to get out, of your, get out of your house, you need to get it out. Because now we rolling up into another time. We rolling up into another season. A new year has begun, and this is all the stuff that we need to be considering. Because no man know the hour and day when this man coming back. So have you done everything you did to stand and get this man's spirit and, and drink from this man um, tree and drink from this water and eat from this man tree? All right. Praise God.